to that. Yeah, everyone yeah. can hear. Right. Everyone, there's not many of you, but um, hello to the people that did attend. So, um, my name's Ewan Haig. Um, I'm from SIP Synergy, um, albeit you see up there, um, we're CoreRoot. So, CoreRoot is a service offering of SIP Synergy. And as the title suggests, um, it's about direct routing and how that meets software as a service. So, quickly looking at the agenda, who is CoreRoot? I'll give you a bit of an overview on that. Um, I'm going to take my life in my hands in the sense of I haven't got many PowerPoint slides, so I want to sort of try the curse of the, the live demo. I have been doing it this morning, and all the sort of the Microsoft infrastructure, even some of the GitHub stuff has been a bit up and down, so I must admit, you know, apologies in advance. It has worked most of the time this morning, but there has been occasions where it's been a bit like, oh no. <laughs> Um, so we're going to have a challenge go from zero to making a phone call in three minutes and that's actually a real phone call so I'm going to get my phone out, dial a number and hopefully it's going to ring. Um, we're going to look at managing uh, migrations from a legacy environment, so just a, a SIP trunk down to a PBX to Microsoft Teams. We're going to do that again live in the portal. We'll have a quick look at our commercial model and also our plans for the future. So just a bit about me, um, obviously I'm the guy on the left, not the guy on the right. Um, I've got 25 years of experience in kind of IT and telecoms. Previously, for those who do, who do know me, I, I was previously at Audio Code, so I ran Audio Codes um, for six years, very much in the world of kind of SBCs and, and voice infra infrastructure. So why call root? I suppose it's like, you know, scratch the itch. SBCs are very complicated beasts. It's like, you know, looking to try and sassify it, make it simple, beautiful, and not complicated. So in a way, you know, if you can use an iPhone, you can use our portal. You know, that's been the mission of what, we, what we've been trying to build. So a little bit about uh, Call Root. So it's a service offering of SIP Synergy. SIP Synergy started or was founded about um, 10 years ago. Traditionally, we are a Cisco house. Um, but obviously, the elephant in the room, and the reason why people are here today, is Microsoft have been kind of cannibalizing a lot of that kind of tra you know, traditional Cisco and like kind of revenue. So we had to embrace it. Um, and we have built a direct routing offering. But the UK is a very congested market. So we had to be different. And I'm going to show you guys how we are different. So it's kind of like direct routing SaaS play plus, plus, plus. Um, and our vision is very much to be like the, the Netflix of this space. So, you know, very much pay as you go, 30 day rolling contracts, scale up, scale down, all that sort of good stuff. So, this is the bit which has kind of got the disclaimer on it. They do say with um, presentations, avoid doing things with animals, avoid doing things with kids, and avoid doing live demos. So, on that note, here we go. I'll put my glasses on for this bit, if I can find them. So, here we go, if I make this bigger. So this is our call root portal. So it's 100% cloud. You can sign up for free. It takes a couple of minutes just to get an account. Uh, there is also a free trial available. So in here we have our phone numbers which we can connect to services. In this case, you can see most of them are connected down traditional SIP trunks. And then over here, oops, um, we have services. Now the one, one, the one that's missing at the moment is, is Microsoft Teams. So I'm actually going to take you through the process of adding Microsoft Teams to a completely kind of, you know, fresh and blank tenant. And just to kind of prove what I'm doing is genuine and it's not kind of, um, you know, fake if you like. Here's a, a, a Microsoft Teams tenant. I can go in here, have a look at the um, direct routing. And you can see in here there's no SBC. None of the users have phone numbers. For example, James Bond, because I'm actually going to give James Bond a phone number. You can see he doesn't have a phone number. So I'm going to go back into the call root portal. I'm going to add a service, which in this case is Microsoft Teams. And a little box will pop up in a minute. I'm now actually going to have to authorize myself. So I'm actually going to go away and actually grab like an Azure token. Um, and then what we can do is inspect the tenant to see if we have everything we need to kind of do all the read writes and, and all that sort of stuff and make sure the user's got, the connected user's got the right role. So I'm going off and redirecting to Microsoft. Now hopefully this, this bit can be a bit slow. It's been a bit slow all day. So just bear with me, it will work. This is when the kind of plate spinning starts. Here we go. 
So this is the one I've created, a user called a service user. We recommend that you do this versus you using your sort of personal uh, Microsoft account. He's got a global admin role, which is what you need. There is a combination of other scopes you can use, but just for this demo purposes, I've used global admin. Oh, by the way, I've already kind of um, signed into the account, so I didn't have to enter my password. I'm now gonna run the readiness checker. So what this does is it's going away and just making sure that that user has the right privileges, roles, has the right licensing, all that sort of good stuff. So essentially we don't want to do any integration with the Microsoft tenant and for it to fail. So we do a lot of kind of what we call pre-flight checks. The next bit I'm going to do is actually integrate call root. Um, so I'm going to get like a user impersonation token so we can then write the policies down to the, the team's tenant. So I'm going to sign in again with the same user and it's going to go off and it's going to start integrating. So it's going to go off and, and provision the domain. It's going to verify the domain. It's going to then um, sort out the dial plans, the voice routing policies, provision the SPC. This is the bit um, which generally takes about 20 to 30 seconds to do. Today, as my colleague at the back will say, has been doing some demos, it can take anything from 20 to 30 seconds up to about two to three minutes because, oh, bingo, there we go. So you can see here, the tenant has now synchronized and there's two users that have been pulled through. So if I go back to my, um, oh, sorry, go to here, you can see here, no, wrong one. You'll see here just there are two users that actually have a phone system license. So essentially we do synchronize all the users, but obviously we're just presenting the ones that have the right licensing that can obviously be used with call route to make phone calls. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to give James a phone number. So if you remember, he doesn't have a phone number in the Microsoft Teams tenant. I want to activate the user, assign him a CLI, and I'm going to save it, and it's now going to go off and activate. So it's now essentially giving the user a phone number, giving them the dial plan, and giving him the voice routing policy. So as you can see, it's all pretty simple at this stage, and this is going to be the, the CLI. So this is the number that's presented to the user on the outbound leg. So you can see it's gone active. So if I now go back to the user profile and I refresh James, you will see that James now, in the Teams tenant, has a phone number. And if I actually went into some of the policies down here, you would also see that James now has the relevant dial plan and voice routing policy. So James is good to go in the sense of making outbound calls. Um, but what we also do is we have a powerful kind of concept whereby this is just the outbound leg. These are our inbound numbers. So I'm going to take this number here. So for example, if I was to now dial this, um, this 360 number, it just goes beep, beep, beep. So I'm actually now going to take the 360 number. I'm going to actually assign it. Now we do support multiple services. It's a bit of a Lego kit. Um, so we're Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Teams, select a user, which is James Bond. And also we do failover routing. So if Microsoft Teams is not available for whatever reason, it can fall back to another trunk or forward a number. So it's got the resiliency built in. Save that. That's now writing to our SBC infrastructure. In terms of the number assignment, it can take about, we batch everything up and it takes up to 60, to 60 seconds to, to assign. So, if I was to, I'll tell you what I'll do, I can try it now, but the chance is probably not, not going to, it's not going to have propagated yet, so I, I will come back to that. Um, so what we'll do quickly now is have a look at, I mentioned about migrating from sort of legacy environments to the Microsoft Teams environments, which typically involved a lot of skills and Microsoft rosettes and engineering time. So you can see these numbers here, they are provisioned down to a SIP trunk, and they, you know you can actually set the SIP trunks up within call route. These are all connected down, so I'm going to take this SIP trunk here. I'm now going to say, okay, it, I don't want it mapping down to a, an Avaya PBX in London. I want to map it to Microsoft Teams, and specifically I want to map it to the user James Bond. So that will then go away, and you can also see now, it's like, ah, James has got multiple numbers, so you could have like a French number or a UK number or, you know, multiple numbers with that user. So let's just try uh, James again. Oh, here we go. James Bond is currently unavailable. So you can see live demos work. Amazing. <laughs> so there we go. That is, I was stressing this morning, but it didn't work. <laughs> 
So yeah, that's how we can deal with uh, the, the legacy environments. And in terms of kind of what's coming in the future, if you imagine our services environment, you'll be able to hit add, and it'll be like add an analog gateway or add an on-premise SBC and all that sort of good stuff. And also, at the moment, we are the PSDN carrier, so you get your lines and minutes from us. In future, uh, we're going to be bring your own carrier, so we just become the bit in the middle, and you can bring any trunk from any country, plug it into our platform, and get the agility that you need to kind of create your own kind of telecoms environment. Okay, so quickly coming off of that. Uh, as we're at Commsverse, um, we do go to market through partners. Um, so you can see here, there's a nice kind of Commsverse bra uh, branded uh, portal. So if you're a reseller and you want to deliver the call route service, but under your own branding, um, so this is what the, the reseller sees. The reseller can go and kind of invite a, a, an end user to the service and it's all branded, you know, Commsverse or the, the reseller in, in question. So going back to my presentation, going back to this, see what I had on the agenda next. So we've done the kind of scary bit, which was the live demo. Yeah, so we did the, I don't know how long it took, so I actually sort of talked you through it, but I've actually done it when I did it with the staff in the office. From literally the first point you sign in to actually getting dial tone, we can do it in less than two minutes. And there's certain other companies out there that are sort of claiming, wow, look at us, you know, we can do it in 15 minutes. Well, I'll say we can do it in, in, in literally two minutes, which we think, you know, is, is pretty good and something we're pretty proud of. So what's our commercial model? So we have very much a partner focus. Um, because it's a SaaS-based product, we've got to keep the pricing simple. So you, you pretty much just, well, you just pay for every phone number that we manage on the, on the platform and for every kind of SIP trunk or channel that you connect. There's no setup fees. It's all pay as you go. You know, it's 30-day rolling contracts. If you want to scale up, scale down, cancel, all that sort of stuff. Very much like what Microsoft do with their 365. Um, and it's also free to try, so you can sign up, um, go through the provisioning process, you get a phone number, we give you 253 minutes a month. So in terms of doing POCs with customers, or if an end user wants to try it, it's really, really simple to, to try, and there's no obligation. And that 30, it's not a 30-day free trial, it's kind of a forever thing. Um, I'm not sure we'll continue it, just in case you know, people abuse it. But anyway, it's, at the moment, it's a, a forever thing. So in terms of plans for the future, um, so at the moment, uh, the white label is pretty much brand new. We've got it as kind of a proof of concept, so that'll be something you can literally upload your logo to and do everything from a self-service standpoint. Um, and the next big thing uh, on our radar is, you know, we're going to do full bring your own carriers. So if you have customers or you're a kind of a company out in Brazil or Australia or wherever, you can plug a, as in Australia it would be Telstra, you can plug your Telstra's trunk in, you can go through the whole kind of process provisioning teams and just bring your own trunk without having to port your numbers, bring it into call route and connect your, your numbers to Teams or an analog endpoint or a SIP phone or dare I say it, when we support it, Zoom. But we also support WebEx calling. So you can see it's a real sort of Lego kit in the sense of what you can do with it. Um, and I say you do not have to have like all these Microsoft rosettes or voice engineering skills. If, if you, you have an iPhone and you can't use this, you know, we've, we've done something wrong as a, as a company. So we're absolutely hell-bent on delivering something which you do not have to use a manual. And that's kind of the mandate of, of what we're trying to do. Um, lots of kind of nice things you want to do, you know, provisioning of numbers, like have gold, silver, bronze numbers, bronze numbers, because there's all sort of different roles-based access in the platform. So locking down, you know, which numbers can be assigned to which users based on the rights you have within the admin tenant. And really, what's our mission? You know, we want to be the ultimate kind of SaaS telephony platform. You know, just just be that box of Lego, that box of Meccano, whatever you want to call it, um, for our partners to be able to build solutions for for their customers. Um, so I told you I didn't have many slides, um, but I've been pretty involved in building this. If anyone's got any questions as to number porting, yeah, so we do number porting. Um, it will actually be in the portal, so it'll be something that the, it can actually be handled. You'll be able to see the status of the number port, the anticipated port date. At the moment, to be honest, it is a little bit manual. We haven't released the automation side of it. Um, but yeah, at the moment, because we are the PSDM provider, numbers, you have to port your numbers in. So that's where, at the moment, we're pretty much just focused on the UK. I mean, number porting in the UK is typically around about 10 days. Um, but yeah, we support number porting, absolutely. Yeah. Any 
any other questions? I can throw the mic at you. I mean, other things to mention, I suppose, actually within the platform, in case you guys are interested. So we don't just do direct routing and say we support these other services, um, but we also do clever little things like, for example, if I was to go into the, the portal and go into record, uh, sorry, reporting, there's all sorts of lovely kind of pretty stats about utilization. And if you've got the right package, you can see in here there's icons to do with speakers. I mean, this is all, it's all, it's trunk side PSDN call recording, it's MIFID 2 compliant. Um, so you can get access to all your call recordings, download them. It's instant kind of retrieval, so you literally press on the button and you can play the recording straight away. Um, so you don't have to go off and get a, a separate call recording platform. This is just trunk side though, it's only stuff that goes through the SBCs. Anything which is required to go into the Microsoft Teams peer to peer stuff, that would be bot based and that would be like audio codes or Dubber or ASC and, and, and such like. So call recording is all part of the kind of subscription, you kind of get it by default. Um, maybe there's a, maybe I'll give you a sneak preview of something else if I, I say what's the time, quarter to, so we've got half an hour, so I'll give you another sneak preview of something else we're doing. Oh, sorry. Question, sorry. Thank you. Um, all right. The first question is, uh, uh, what do you have to have as an administrator to be able, to, in the Microsoft Teams, to be able to use this? Yeah. So on the initial provisioning, um, we recommend global admin, but that's because we need to create the domain and verify the domain. If people are a bit sensitive to that, we can get away with, I think it's um, user administrator, global admin, no, not global, teams administrator, user admin, domain admin, and I think it's application administrator. There's a combination of those four. But once we've done the provisioning, then that's most of the nasty work out of the way. So for all the, the ad moves and changes, because you, you can go in and like change people's phone numbers, for that we only need Teams admin. So you can go and downgrade the scope of the connected user once the provisioning is done. Um, we are going to be adding what we call the uh, AAD, so we can update the number associated with you know the number you see when you click on someone's contact card in, in Outlook and you get the number. The Teams kind of phone number lives in a different place to what's presented in Outlook. So we are going to be updating both, but to do that you will need Teams admin and user admin. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do the AAD stuff, you would need user admin as well. And you need to write into the AAD admin? Yes, so, yeah, so to update that kind of contact card, we would yeah. need user admin, and we will then, so essentially there'll be two kind of forks, if you like. One, we're talking to the Teams admin center, which will sort the telephony bit out, and then there's the kind of 365 Azure invite, the Azure Active Directory. Okay, and if I want to buy a, a DDI, mm -hmm. where, do, where do I do it there? So in the future, this will be fully end-to-end e-commerce. You'll be able to go in, buy your phone numbers. At the moment, if we were to, so I'll go back to the, the live environment. So you can see in here, if I go to my numbers, these are the numbers get more numbers, it kind of pops up and says, and says please contact us. Um, if I was to show you kind of what we're working on, it's a full end-to-end, -end. you can type in the number, it will give you a price, like a monthly recurring price. It will be kind of, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Voxbone in the sense of like um, the way they do up all their top-ups, so it will be kind of a prepaid balance thing, you have a balance in your account and it will just be decremented each month. Um, but yeah, you, at the moment you buy the phone numbers through the partner or for some, you know, we do have some end user customers from the early days. But yeah, you have to, it's a bit of a manual. At the moment, the portal is very automated. The commercial transaction at the moment is, is a little bit manual, but in a few months it'll be full end-to-end e-commerce. And, and, and then on that process, if I want to buy several DDIs to keep them as a spare, so at least I know that I will not clash my DDIs with different companies, can I reserve those DDIs? Well, essentially, every DDI that's that's in this portal, you know, we charge you a monthly recurring fee yeah. regardless whether you assign it to a service or not. So once the numbers are in there, from our standpoint, they're chargeable. In terms of the 
emergency services, how are you handling that? So if one of those users picks up and makes a 909 call, is that something that you're managing? So the, 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 yep. it's, it's the emergency services registration of the... So the, the emergency services stuff, that is all covered. I don't have all of the kind of the nitty gritty under the hood details, but we are fully kind of E911 compliant. I mean, we do need to take this to say we're focused on the UK at the moment. Yeah. Um, but I mean, one of, obviously, you know, if Microsoft Teams is, is down and someone's trying to use their Teams client to call you know, uh, a number or a 999 service, you know, it's, it's, it's a problem, but that's why, for example, in here, you know, we have the ability to put my glasses back on again. If I go into services, you can create SIP phones, so you can have a SIP phone that's directly registered into our service, so there are multiple paths to make outbound calls, if you like, as well. That answers your question. It's UK based um, international numbering. Is that available at the moment or is that something in the road? So it's, it's something that we did do. Um, we still have, the thing is obviously outside of the UK it's, it's a plethora of um, regulation and compliance and it's a bit of a minefield. Um, so our strategy going outside of the UK will be very much like customers bringing their own carriers so therefore they're in charge of all the regulatory stuff or they're buying it from a, a carrier in country. I mean the thing is it's a bit, you know, things move like we could be compliant in Latvia today because it's easy and then in three months time Latvian telco change the rules and then we're in a situation where we either have to kind of comply with them by spending loads of money or they take the numbers off us so I mean there, is, there are very easy ways we could very easily and we have done it use aggregators and we could then quite easily say we are in 60 plus countries but the thing is that doesn't get rid of all the regulatory and compliance challenges so we, we have to be quite careful on that. Just a quick question. On resource accounts like call queues and auto attendance, mm -hmm. I noticed on the commercials that you said you pay, uh, was it per user and per channel? No, it's per phone number. So a resource account, I mean, you don't pay per user. So okay. if I go to the actual um, Microsoft Teams users here, if I go to uh, configure, so in here, if I maybe go to some of the ones which are actually unavailable, because it does a full day, you see here the icons are, are different. Yeah. So these ones here, these are resource accounts, but we don't charge for the number. You could have 300,000 users in your AD, we don't care. What we do care about is how many people are assigned a phone number. So, so, if, I, so if you have a resource account... And you assign that resource account, because basically, what if, you, if you have 100 phone numbers, yeah. and you assign 90 of them to users and 10 of them to resource accounts, bottom line is you're paying us for 100 numbers, regardless of how you assign them. So but does that translate to concurrent calls into a call queue? No. So we just care about, I mean, basically, you've got, it's like a motorway, you've got three lanes, you can only drive three cars down yeah, three yeah, lanes. Yeah. yeah, so we just say, if, if you've got 10 trunks connected, you pay us for 10 trunks, regardless of whether you're using them or not. It's just like buying SIP trunking. So, sorry, I don't understand that. What's the mechanism? Is Am I, am I getting a channel for every number? No. No. So no, if no. I have a, a call queue... How do I make sure I can, I want to have a hundred so calls down, down, down to you to manage the contention ratios. So if you, however many users you've got, you have to work out if I've got a thousand numbers, how many, how many calls you're making at one time and you need to buy enough channels to ensure that you've always got dial tone. Oh, so I do buy channels. Yes, you have, that's the thing, our commercial oh, that's what model. I asked, sorry, if you buy Oh, sorry, channels. sorry. Okay, yeah, it's, so I have it's to numbers buy and channels, channels, numbers and channels, it's a mix. So yeah. you get, I mean, typically, I mean, years ago, the contention ratios were like five to one. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen it because I've done a lot of work with BT and I saw a lot of the reports, you know, you could be looking at contention ratios of 100 to 1 in terms of users to, to the average, across, if you looked at across multiple customers, because some are heavy users of telephony, some people in teams have got a phone number, like me, and never ever use it. And my channels, are they across multiple tenants or are they assigned to one tenant? So at the moment it's per individual end user tenant, okay. however, however, because we're partner, we're going very much down the partner route, it, we will probably support the concept where the partner has a, a kind of a bucket of channels and they assign and de-assign them based on their customers' demands. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So there we go, I got over the curse, I was, say, fret, I was fretting this one, we've got over the curse of the live demo, so uh, I think I was a bit brave doing that. <laughs>
But there you go, it just proves it all works and it's a proper cloud platform. But say if anyone wants to sign up, just go to callroot.io, you can register for a free account, you get a free phone number, you get a free um, single trunk, and you, we give you 250 free minutes, but that is just primary mobile networks and landline, so it'll block it. If you try and phone France or Australia, you just, it'll just block it, but it'll allow, it'll allow you to test it. Sorry, one more question okay, based on that then. Do you have fraud prevention built in? Fraud prevention? Yeah. Uh, good question. I know with the when we go down the the top up balance route then there'll obviously be balances and you can be able to set thresholds. Obviously, if the spend is you know, above a certain amount, then we pretty much just cut people off. But at the moment, I think there is stuff in our SBCs, but I'm not the voice engineer, so okay. I don't know exactly how that would work, but we do have fraud prevention in it, but I couldn't tell you exactly. And, and so, is it all prepaid? It will be. At the moment, it's, say, it's manual invoicing, and the, the minute side of things, you know, at the end of the month, you get a bill for the minutes. Okay. Um, but in the future, if you don't have a sufficient um, uh, balance in your account, basically you won't be allowed to make a call. Okay. But so if someone loses their phone with Teams on or their laptop and someone makes calls on their behalf at the minute, I'd just be invoiced for them. At the minute, you would, unless there's something, yeah, unless there's something in our SBCs, but say I'm not the voice engineer, so sure. I can't say, I can't give you the details of any other research questions, but I couldn't tell you exactly you. what we do on the fraud front. But there is stuff, because bearing in mind we are a telco, a telecoms company that started in 2000. We've just lived in Cisco land for, so all that stuff exists in our Cisco. They've ported it all into this, what it looks like under the hood. I'm a little bit. So, there we go. Three minutes to spare. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all.